show and tell, amazing comic books came in. They didn't get damaged upon shipment. Bravo, USPS and UPS. There's a little bit of FedEx on this table as well. I have some books. You have some books. First, you have a Golden Age book with an elephant with blood dripping down its mouth. Explain. Yeah, this is um, an extremely rare book. And it's, for those who know, because it's so rarely traded, it's the bloodthirsty elephant cover. He's got red eyes. He's got blood coming out of his mouth. He's charging at these two, what appears to be hunters. And um, it showed up, and I had to get it. There's only been two recorded sales on GPA of this book, and they were in like 2009, 2010. I think there's only eight on the census of this book. This is when CBCS, because the person who graded it sends this stuff to CBCS, which is fine. But he felt that he needed to glue, for some reason, a tiny corner um, of a spine split and then attached the floating piece in that corner as well. So he got a conserve 3.0, which is fine because it's fully um, reversible. And I got the book for a discount because he went and did that. It's a 3.0 conserve CBCS graded copy from 1939 DC Adventure Comics number 34. And this is definitely old, expensive paper at its best. We have some what appears to be I don't know, probably from the sun, like some f a faded cover to a degree. It's also rippled a little bit. Are you thinking you're going to try to grade bump this? Um, I don't know. I don't. I, I, after looking at other copies, it doesn't seem faded. It is what that cover is. The cover is detached, and that's why it looks like a seven five eight zero. So it's cleanly detached. Like when you look at it, it looks like it is attached, but it's such a clean separation um, that it's just coming off. It's detached. So not much you can do about it. But there is a chance with some books, and I don't know if this is one of them or not. I'm going to have to have it reviewed. I know I can remove the conservation, and there is a possibility of reattaching that cover to the staples. Now, if that happens, this book may get a 5.5 five blue, and that's, that's a big deal for this book already. What would you estimate that value if that were to come it's so tough because this book doesn't come up for sale very often. Um, we have a Jerry Siegel story. We also have work done by Bob Kane on the interior. And what's awesome about this book and seeing those two names on there first, who are those two individuals? Jerry Siegel helped create Superman and Bob Kane was the main artist for Batman for a very long time. Um, there is conversations that, you know, there might've been some other help than Bob Kane creating Batman, like uh, a lot, a lot. Yeah, like Jerry Robinson, who didn't get as much credit. Bill Finger. Bill Finger. So this right here, given that it's 1939, this is like pre-mass superhero. Yeah, we don't see uh, superheroes kick in in there until issue 40 with Sandman. So this was new adventure comics from 12 to 31. Then it became adventure comics from 32 on. And so this is a kind of a pre-hero issue in the golden age. Okay, so you're getting to price. Yeah, I'm sorry. So price, I would say it's one of those private sale books you just kind of pass around. I'm already going to rehome it to somebody I know who's been looking for that book for a very, very long time. But if I can get to that 5.5, five, I can see it being an $8,000 plus dollar book. $8,000, comic fam. There's something to be said about strange animal covers and golden age collectors. I've met a handful of them who legit, all they want is that particular animal on the cover, an octopus a tiger, an elephant. You know what I'm talking about. Oh, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Um, octopus covers, I'm a huge fan. Uh, people love gorilla covers. Uh, you have the whole jungle runs. You have jungle uh, comics. You got jumbo comics. They're all just set in a jungle-type atmosphere. So people really love their animal covers. Thanks for bringing this one on the show today. I have a very easy book to show off here because these all came in the same week when I spec. I spec hard. I try to go after the books that I am thinking have some potential. And I like to do it all at once because if the market's right for one, it's likely right for the variants and other books. It's modern books. But I do have a stack of Scott Snyder's Witches Number 1. He teamed up with Jock to make this amazing horror narrative. And it's disturbing. It's got body horror. Some major themes, major subjects. Not for everyone. I have given this book 
lent it multiple times. I have many copies of the graphic novel. And someone who is a fan of horror either loves it or it's a little too much. That's why I have a affiliation for this because it causes a strong feeling that lasts with its readers and hearing that there is option potential with this book. It may not happen for some time. I saw prices of cover A of Witches one hit right around 150 at its peak. If you wait on auction now, you can get them for right around 80. So I tried to scoop them up around 100 and basically said, you know what, if I'm patient, I could pay a little bit less, but I may not be able to get them all at once. So I just went in, paid a little bit more than what like auction sales go for and bought a bunch of these for near 100, 115, 120 bucks. If you type in Witches on eBay, you can see these sales. So first one, which wasn't on the lower end of that scale, it's because it's a CBCS 9.8 signed by Scott Snyder. I figured, why not? It's the only one that was really affordable on eBay. I think I grabbed that for under 200 bucks. I also have here a Witches number one Midtown Comics. This is a exclusive and it's done by Sean Murphy. And it's just a gorgeous cover. Something that I'll do is look at a modern run and Bring up all of the variants, specifically on an app like Key Collector, where you can see them all on one page. And I kind of judge them based off each other and scarcity. When they're all affordable, it really starts to become about your own personal taste and what you think could pop. It's a total gamble. But this variant was affordable and stood up kind of above some of the others. So I said, why not? It, it looks cool. I like the lighting. Obviously, I had to get a couple copies of just the standard cover A, and that's this one right here. Take a look at that cover. Jock is so good, man. He is. That's actually a really cool cover. The first one you gave me, let me check this one This out. one's just cover oh. A. What are you looking at? It's a very simple cover. It looks like it's a wood scene. Very much feels like uh, Blair Witch in a weird way, mm -hmm. like a child in the woods, and all you, it's kind of washed out in color, right? It's very light blue and uh, blacks, but then a very striking red dripping from a tree is to just show that it's bleeding. So when I tell you that that's where individuals go to die in this comic, inside a tree, it should intrigue you enough to then look at that cover again and go, oh, this is horrific what I'm looking at here. Um, um, so you're basically watching a death on the cover. Pretty powerful. Issue number one had a ghost variant cover. This one goes for near the same amount as cover A. Another trippy looking, just disturbing cover. Okay, first off, uh, a tree is where people go to. Uh, peop the trees are people? No. No, they're it's, witch it's called witches. Witches. So they go to this forest to die. You got to read the book. I'm going to have Jeff read the book, Comic Fam. And if you've read Witches or Witches, as Nick from Key Collector Comics calls it, because it's spelled with a Y, um, comment down below. Let me know what you think about this. Maybe I'll get Jeff to read it. You're not big on horror. I, I, you used to be. Yeah, I used to be. I like horror. I do. You had kids, though, right? That's the, I've heard that in the community a few times. Like, I used to love horror, but now I have kids. Everything's a little different to look at. Weird. Right? It's a, it's a strange thing that happens. So... Other thing that I don't typically do is by issue twos. If I'm going to spec on a book, I'm going for cover A and looking for variants, scarce prints of that book, maybe a signed book of cover A. I bought an issue two, the Phantom Variant exclusive, just because after all the books you've seen, how dark they are, how much surrealism is on these covers, I saw this one and it stood it just it kind of separated itself from the pack. It's more vibrant. It's an issue two exclusive. I felt like, why not? It's affordable, and it, it's just different enough that I think if the show does happen, all these books will be fair game. But the ones that look different from the others, those are the ones that could go way further. Yeah, it's a cool cover, man. You kind of got this looming tree of death over this character, so it seems to tie in with what you're telling me story-wise. And I love the color scheme. It's a little uh, more vibrant than the, than the rest because you have like the green and yellow. But again, it's all about the trees and being vulnerable because that's what the comic book makes you feel like. It's a family comic book, to be honest. It's all about loving your kids and, and protecting them. All kind of tree hugging stuff? Or? That's right, man. Yeah. Basically, just mm -hmm. a little bit more <laughs> disturbing. Okay, you got one more book, Jeff. We're not going to uh, stop talking until you show this other kind of within the horror theme type of book, but it's crime, right? Yeah. I mean, I love crime. 
Crime for the Golden Age is a great way for you to enter into Golden Age because it's it's super reasonable. All right, and there's so much of it and great, great covers and pretty good stories on the interior. So this is uh, Underworld Crime number seven. It's really a classic crime cover with kind of a horror feel appeal because you have this girl looks bound by gangsters with this hot poker at her face. And you can obviously tell she's about to be tortured or in terror. Um, this is a 5.0. Uh, what, is it, what is it? Off White Pages? Off White Pages covered by Bill Woolfolk. This is a gorgeous, gorgeous 5 0. Beautiful 5 0. And this book apparently just had a really, really strong sale. I just saw that on an IG post yesterday. So I need to look it up real quick. Look that up here because I'll tell them about this cover. It actually says on the CGC label bondage and torture cover. Interesting thing that I've had to express and explain to individuals who are not part of the community per se, but they know that comic collecting is a thing is that there are so many subcategories of collectors and some specifically go after things that seem super demented, almost wrong to own. And there's an appeal to owning these types of books. And there's a lot of different reasons people enjoy owning these scarce collectibles. And I think it's because it's so wild that it exists and during the time that it was being produced was largely marketed to youth that it becomes a collectible now that people seek to find in the community, but they're so rare because so many were destroyed and barely last. Cause this is from 1953 that that's why it holds such, you know, height in the marketplace. Yeah. I mean, we just had the sales. So I finally took a look at it and a five Oh just went for 7,200, which is I believe almost double from what it was before. And it's no surprise that book has sat and slept and I've had it for a little bit. I was pleased to really get finally a copy, but I am not surprised that it finally hit that seven plus thousand dollar mark. It deserves it. It's a great, great book for that time frame of comics for the atomic age. It's the last issue of the run gangsters literally holding the damsel in distress by the hair. It is astounding that it exists well it's just a beautiful artwork too it isn't just you know you'll see some cool covers from that time frame but sometimes the artwork's a little sloppy but it's still you know appreciated to an extent um there's so much drama and horror in this cover that um you can't not love it by just looking at it starting the auction off at one dollar for one minute like we always do this is one of our favorite covers and you got it a little bit of that, what y'all been looking for, right? A little bit of that for what y'all been looking for, right? 